You can see here behind with the cross actually on the top of it. And it's the grave of Tom Burke, formerly of Siskin Upper Church, who died on the 24th of March 1922. Now at the time of his death, his address was actually given as 174 James Street, Dublin, and his age was 61. The Tiberi man had left his native county as a youth to serve as an apprenticeship to the bear and grocery trade in Dublin. In, 18, in 1877, a man by the name of Thomas Cosgrave and his wife Bridget took ownership of a licensed premises at the above address, 174 James Street in Dublin. Now sometime in the intervening 11 years, Tom Burke actually joined the staff there and eventually he rose to the um, post of head barman. On the 7th of July, 1888, at the age of 33, Thomas Cosgrove died, leaving a young widow and he also left behind three sons, William Thomas, Philip and Patrick. And on the 2nd of September, 1891, Bridget Cosgrove married her head German, Thomas Burke. This marriage produced two children, Joan and Frank, who was known as Gobbin. Now, was, was Thomas Burke's sole claim to fame the fact that he married the mother of the man who was Ireland's first prime minister? or that his only son was a member of the South Dublin Union garrison under the command of Eamon Kant and was one of the first men to die in Easter week when he was hit by a sniper's bullet at the South Dublin Union. Now his daughter Joan actually went on to achieve international fame as a renowned soprano. But Thomas Burke in political terms was unusual among Dublin publicans and business people around the first decade of the 20th century. While most were active supporters of the Irish Parliamentary Party in the municipal elections to Dublin Corporation, they mostly supported a coalition of candidates drawn from among their own ranks and dedicated to the preservation of their own interests. When W.T. Cosgrave took his seat on Dublin Corporation on behalf of Sinn Féin in 1908, he was one of the most powerful of advocates for social reform in a city blighted with poverty. How much of this was down to the influence of the barman who came from Seskin and Upper Church and whose family were steeped in Fenian tradition, we will never know. Six months after the death of Thomas Burke, on the 30th of September 1922, his wife's brother-in-law, Patrick Cosgrove, was shot dead by Republican forces in a raid on the James Street public house. On the day in March 1922, when um, Thomas Burke was actually laid to rest here, um, it was one of the occasions on which W.T. Cosgrave actually attended funerals here in Glen King. Um, so that, say, is the grave of Thomas Burke. And now I'm going to hand over to John Connors. Glen King Cemetery, I suppose, like every ancient cemetery, holds its share of mysteries. And uh, there, there are some things I suppose take deep study, but there's some things too that are very obvious, you know. And when you walk into any ancient cemetery, you're, 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 you're pretty quickly, you know, who were the people of influence uh, back in uh, a certain time. And uh, that's generally the, the, the parts of the grave with, with an iron railing around it. And uh, more than likely the forest keeper taking care of it in, in present times, because that's the way generations go. Um, the, the, the iron railing themselves, I, I believe, uh, people put those up at the time when when um, surgery and medicine, and uh, th th these colleges were training doctors and surgeons, and it was a fierce demand for, for, for dead bodies to practice on. So uh, people who had to wear it all, they, they put up their iron rail and they fenced in their relatives to dead. Now, inside the, the iron rail and there, there certainly are people of uh, particular importance. Uh, one is a Rodolphus Fogarty from Rossmull Cottage. Uh, uh, a doctor, Edward Kelly, who was a doctor in Boris uh, died in 1460. And Charlotte uh, Fogarty, uh, Charlotte Bourke, Lee Cahill from this Cahill house in Torlis, and she was married to a fellow called George Bourke. Now, when, when George Bourke died, uh, every shop in Torlis, every shop in Boris and most of the shops in Temple Bourke closed on that particular day. There were 30 clergy at his funeral. And uh, uh, says, uh, 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 says about him, uh, and these 30 clergy accompanied the remains to Glen Keegan, and all the shops in Torres, Boris Lee, and many in Temple Moore were closed as a sign of respect. So, 
the newspaper, at, the newspaper reports had this to say about him at the time. He was a ready speaker, a clear and clever writer, and possessing a large share of ability. He's possibly described uh, as being the cause of immense grief within the neighbourhood and immediate family. So, you're going to wonder what did George Burke do to deserve all of this adulation. Well, what George Burke was, he was part of a new generation that came to prominence in the immediate aftermath of the famine. Um, they identified the, the, the course of the land or system and the immediate need for land reform and the organisation of a coherent political movement. And they set in place the foundation for what in time would become the Irish Parliamentary Party. And these were organised on a, a county basis and they were organised into units described as county opposition clubs. Most of the Irish Parliamentary, the, 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 the MPs who, who um, went to Westminster, they supported the Liberal Party. And these guys, uh, their uh, philosophy was that they would support uh, the parties and the policy that supported Ireland and anything outside of that they would, they, they would oppose. So, needless to say, no matter what government was in power in England, be it liberal or, or conservative, the, the, these guys were certainly in opposition most of the time. So, they were organised on a county basis. And, uh, uh, there, was, there, was, there was one or two prayers. The, 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 the executive makes kind of interesting enough reading. There was a, a barrister, George Brooker's solicitor, and a number of gentlemen. Uh, they all bear the uh, uh, suffix uh, Esquire to their name. So they, they, these are uh, pretty well to do gentlemen they were. And there was also five priests, including William Morris and, 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 uh, and Father Malani. And they were PPs of uh, the Bursley and Drummond Inch uh, at the time. Now, uh, was, uh, at the general election of 1857, uh, there was a, a, a convention was held, and it was held in the courthouse in Torlis. And as the paper said at the time, uh, this was only a formality because the two candidates, uh, Donahue of the Glens, from Glenfesk and Kerry, and a fellow called Lawrence Waldron from, uh, from Dundalk, uh, they, these were the guys who were going to represent him for area. And, and George Burke proposed O'Donoghue the Glens, and uh, the proposal was was uh, was met with what the paper described at the time as a, as a tornado of yells. So O'Donoghue the Glens was pretty popular. He was. So it was only a matter of form then we said the election, and the paper said that that uh, the, the, the court was because there was no. Uh, contest, and it was of little interest in political terms or anything, the, the courthouse in Torres was full of what they described as people of the lower order. So, uh, there was no, there was no, there were medical care patients there. <laughs> no. uh, the, 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 the proposal of, of Waldron went kind of smooth enough at it, until Father left at the PP of Anna County, he got up and he was second in the motion, and he was extolling the virtues of, of, of Waldron. And somebody from the floor, one of these lower orders from the floor said, shout it up, why doesn't he, why, why doesn't he sell his leases to his tenants? And uh, then of course, uh, th th there was a yell of disapproval there was. So, uh, Waldron was to find out very quickly, was it that popular in Torres he wasn't, or probably anywhere for that matter. But uh, he, he, he uh, uh, Father uh, Laffer from Anacarty, he gave the meek excuse, you know, that he said, I think perhaps it uh, has something to do with stamp duty. So th that, was, that was the impetus for an uh, 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 all-out uh, uh, break out of, of right, you could say. Now, uh, Burke was, uh, was involved in, in, in all of that, but, but uh, like, he was, he was popular as well with the lower orders, uh, as they, they would have said at the time, because it wasn't without reason that all the shops uh, in, in Torlum, it wasn't without reason that Mitchell Ferreri came to a standstill on the day he was buried. So, uh, uh, what did he do? Well, it, it, much, of this, much of his popularity centers around the Cormac Brothers, the trial, the trial and execution of the, of the, Cor the Cormac Brothers. Was that on the, 20, the 27th of October in 1857, John Ellis was killed. And uh, as is well known, the, 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 two bro the two Cormac Brothers, uh, the, William and Daniel McCormick, were hanged in, in, uh, in Ina Jail. And 
this, 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 this had a huge transforming effect on politics in, in the Tipperary area, because it, it was quite obvious that the, the comics were, were, were innocent people, and they were convicted by uh, a perjured evidence, a packed jury. And people like Burke, like George Burke, their, their uh, strive was to reform all of this and to give, to, 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 uh, to, to, to as, if it, as if it were to, 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 to and I lay a voice of law, the course of Latin artism. So, these jury members and, and their associates, they, they were very unpopular people. And if they went about their daily business in, in, uh, in Turles, they, they, um, they, they be subject to, to uh, sneers and insults from, from uh, as they said, the people of the, 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 the people of the lower order. So these people were to be shy about taking these people to court because they saw the courts and the law as an extension of, of, of their privilege. So when these court cases took place in Torres, Burke, for no fee, he got up and he defended these people and he traced all of these things back to the, to the execution of the, Macabre, to, of the Carmel brothers. And uh, that's exactly what made, him, what made him a popular man. So he shared platforms with the likes of, of uh, Father John Kenyon and uh, the, 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 the people, people of, of, of that persuasion at that time. So that's the story of uh, George Burke who's buried behind the... the, the the, the realist there. I suppose it's sad to see his monument in such disrepair, you know, because uh, the, the, the political situation was to emerge. Uh, it didn't happen without accident. And he was one of these fellows who, who, uh, who, 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 who were the initiators of that.